in listen only mode. Good morning. I'm Robert Weibel, Senior Project Manager at Fiatech. Uh, and on behalf of Fiatech, I'd like to welcome you uh, to our uh, Tuesday Technology Webinar on Visual Information Management for Construction Operations and Facilities Management. Uh, today we have an exciting program uh, with two speakers uh, from uh, McCarthy Building, Philip Lorenzo and Peter Wu. Uh, we're going to talk about building the 1 million square foot Kaiser Oakland Medical Center. Uh, but before we get into their presentation and a little bio introduction, uh, I do want to uh, note that you do have on the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar on your computer screen our control panel. Uh, we have all of you who are uh, attending on mute, uh, and you will, but you will be able to answer, ask questions throughout the program by clicking on the question box uh, on the right-hand side about midway to three-quarters of the way down uh, in that, uh, that control panel and typing your questions in. We will be passing some of those questions on to our two guest speakers this morning uh, at different parts of the uh, presentation and also going through them uh, at the end uh, of, of their overall presentation. Lastly, before I introduce our speakers, I will remind you all that FIATEC is a member-based organization that brings together companies to accelerate the deployment of technology in capital projects. We have over 70 member companies and are always looking for new ones to join our growing consortium. If you're interested in joining and would like more information or have topics that you'd like to suggest for future webinars, please drop me a note at Weible, W-I-B-L-E, at theatech.org. Now I'd like to introduce both Philip and Peter, uh, giving a little bio piece and then turn the program over to them. Uh, Philip Lorenzo is a project manager for McCarthy working on the Kaiser Oakland Medical Center in California. After graduating with a Bachelor's of Science from the University of California, Berkeley, he joined McCarthy and served as coach for the ASC Design Build Competition Team. Peter is an ASTM committee member where he is actively contributing to setting higher standards for the quality of building construction. Peter is versed in several software languages and systems and is dedicated to streamlining and automating processes. Having self-developed custom software tools and systems related to BIM coordination, 3D point cloud analysis, and digital document control. Joining Peter this morning, is, uh, joining uh, Philip this morning is Peter Wu, who is co-founder of Zimfly, a cloud and mobile app software company dedicated to his vision of applying a learn learn principles to technology to reduce waste in the construction operations and, I'm sorry, lean principles, uh, construction operations and facility management. He leads the development of BIM everywhere as well as other applications and serves the construction industry and facilities. After graduating from both a bachelor's and master's degree from Cal Berkeley, Peter first worked at, as a general contractor. He is a licensed professional engineer and general contractor in California and has worked in Silicon Valley as a network engineer where he learned and developed knowledge in various web technologies and applications. Gentlemen, uh, appreciate your being with us today and I'll turn this over to you, Philip. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So um, in this webinar, we're, we'll be discussing visual information management. Uh, again, this is Philip speaking right now, engineer at McCarthy Building Companies. Um, basically, I'll be talking about currently industry challenges, which stands across both technological and sociological aspects of construction. Then we will delve into the case study of uh, using this visual information management system at the Kaiser Permanente Oakland project in California. We'll be talking about uh, the co collaboration between McCarthy and uh, the system called BIM Anywhere, developed by Zimfly, as well as the process in which we set up and implemented the system on the project. After that, we'll go over various workflows, about construction and facilities management. We'll go over a business analysis in terms of how this made sense for us to use on the project. And Peter will be going over future trends 
and developments with the system. So today, there's, there are many barriers to using BIM on projects as well as accessing information. BIM is a relatively new uh, technology for this industry and is there, there are many BIM managers out there, architects, that th there are many companies that have already adopted BIM on a very wide scale. But really, there seems to be a missing link between BIM in the office and BIM for those that are involved in the last 100 feet in terms of constructing and operating a facility. So this is exactly what uh, this webinar is supposed to address, what the system is supposed to address. Uh, in the construction industry, um, at least especially in the United States, uh, there are there is uh, tends to be a mentality that says if it's not broken, don't fix it. There's also uh, the mentality that BIM is reserved for those who are specialized in BIM as a profession, which requires and as someone who generally has above average technical prowess to be able to navigate a, a relatively complicated piece of software on some very expensive equipment that can be on average about 5,000 US dollars for a good system. At the same time, with the pace in which construction projects um, go up, there's a lot of stress and many people just seem to not be able to find the time to be able to learn how to operate this complicated software. The case study um, that I'll be talking about today will be on a hospital medical center located in California. It's over a million square feet. Construction took three years and consisted of several buildings, a hospital, medical office building, and central utility plant. There were many, many people on the job site every day, average of about 600. And as many of you know, California is a very seismically active region, which means that the overhead coordination for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems was especially challenging. And by extension, coordination of such in terms of installing such systems was equally challenging. At the same time, uh, as with most hospital projects and just any projects in general that span many years, there are many changes to the scope that must be incorporated, which is akin to hitting a moving target. In light of these circumstances, communication was extremely important. What McCarthy did initially in order to help streamline information was to be able to create a visual electronic plan room which provided an intuitive means for accessing all project documents using a simple point and click interface that requires practically no training. Here's an example of that. Say you want to open up uh, a sub project. You simply click that with your mouse and these are all just open source PDFs so that, they, so that they can work on across multiple devices. The meat and bones of this uh, electronic plan will be the latest and greatest plans where the user will be uh, sent over to the table of contents separated by trade. And again, pointing and clicking on where they want to go. They can access the drawings as well as locate posted RFIs which are kept um, up to date. However, one thing was la that was lacking with this was being able to access the building information model. So here's a case study again. This is what the project looks like located in the heart of California adjacent to the Silicon Valley and one of the uh, big challenges that we've been having with accessing building information models out in the field was a lack of, of 
available software and uh, the, the economy of purchasing um, devices that will be able to run building information models. Luckily, we ran into a local startup company called Zimfly, and, and in collaboration between McCarthy and Zimfly, uh, we were selected as one of the lucky um, pilot projects to implement the Biminiware system. The way it initially worked is that we went into the model and we located the inside of door frames. We then created location tags, also known as QR codes, in, in forms of stickers and posted those inside of the door frames. The person would then scan that QR code with an iPad. And the reason why we use iPads is because especially in the United States, um, iPads and, and just iOS devices in general are the most commonly used devices on construction projects because of their relatively ease of use as well as uh, relatively low cost when compared to um, Windows products or Android products. Again, going back, um, a user, a, a user, a field personnel, with basically no training in how to operate and navigate a 3D information BIM model, can just scan a QR code at the location on a construction site. And what the app would do is, it will pull up the correct model and the latest version of that model onto the iPad. The user can then start looking around, pan around, and the 3D geometric information will be overlaid on top of the real world. This is done through a plugin um, directly from the 3D model. In this case, we used Autodesk Navisworks, and uh, this is a plugin that was developed by Zimply. Again, we'd save the viewpoints, and this would actually generate QR codes for us based on those viewpoints. The viewpoints were organized by building location, then level, then room, and then the final location within that room, which was a standard format that seemed to work universally for us. And what's similar to that used um, for various devices across the, the actual project for facilities. Basically, the location tag contains X, Y, and Z um, camera information as well as the orientation of the camera. Or actually, uh, the BIM Anywhere system will actually be able to take in information from um, the QR code and then translate that into coordinates. After that's exported, you create your stickers, and uh, McCarthy took that a uh, step further and created a customized logo. So uh, McCarthy Building Company is a, a general contractor in the United States. Uh, company colors are red, and we also have a small logo for, of the company in the center of the QR code. An alternative way of navigating a 3D model in an easy and intuitive fashion for our field staff, um, this is a relatively new feature, is being able to create an architectural floor plan and align that with a 3D model so that a user would simply have to tap in, on the location that they would like to access, and that would take them to that location in a 3D model. They'll actually zoom down and fly down on, at the ground level um, in the 3D model. And our superintendents love this feature as well as a QR code feature. If you look at it uh, from an alternative standpoint, a superintendent would typically try to get this uh, very demanding software on their 
slow laptops. Um, note that most most of the uh, laptops of our field personnel are generally just used for basic emailing and word processing, and they're not meant for complex 3D models. So running a complex 3D model on those machines uh, is actually very demanding. You know, it runs very slowly. And it's also uh, not too easy to use. Generally, in uh, most of the 3D model viewing software that we use on computers, it would actually take someone being able to navigate up high in, um, on the 3D model, find the gray line location they're at, and try to match it, fly down, orient themselves. It's just, uh, there's a bit of a learning curve there, and, and for, for many people, that's already too much. At that point, you would just call the, the BIM engineer back at the office, or BIM manager back at the office to take care of it for you. What this essentially does is frees up the time uh, for the BIM engineer, BIM manager to dedicate to other value adding processes. Um, this helps with not only their career growth, but allows for the, an expansion of capabilities for the typical field personnel. Uh, the plugin that is, was supplied to us by Zimfly also allowed for um, streamlined updating of the models on our many iPads. And this is kind of where uh, the exciting part comes in, is the location-based information. Um, at this point, are there any uh, questions that we can field? I, I think the questions that we've received so far, I think you've generally answered. Uh, one, of those, one of the questions was, uh, how were the viewpoints generated? Uh, and then the other person asked, when looking on the iPad, how could you move the iPad and the camera? If you move the iPad, would the camera follow? Uh, and I think you've kind of answered those. Um, and then somebody also asked, are documents accessible from a mobile device? which you answered early. So I think we're yeah. up to speed with uh, the questions that have come in thus far. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, the inf all the information that we've, uh, that I'm showing here, other 3D models information, that's all 100% iPad-based, mobile-based, um, with no internet required to clarify. Because um, on typical construction sites for us, internet can be spotty, and we need to be able to access that information on in mobile. Um, that's that saved us a lot of paper as well as you know many thousands of dollars in terms of not having to purchase very expensive windows based equipment so I don't know if that, that helped answers many other questions but that's typically a common question that's asked um, this uh, another method for accessing project documents whether it be submittals RFIs um, just plans stuff like that in addition to be able, being able to access it using a 2D electronic plan room board that you saw in the earlier slide, you can actually attach that information to 3D model objects um, very easily using the BIM Anywhere system. In this example, we actually have an overhead cooling door that a user can simply tap on and access the latest and greatest approved submittal uh, direct from the architect. You can see here that it's been reviewed, it's been redlined, and this up-to-date information is attached to that model object. Uh, a, a second concept, um, this is actually a concept that we've explored, um, which is being able to generate RFI issue bubbles and issue boxes uh, throughout the 3D model so that when a user is looking at a room in 3D, uh, whether it be uh, you know, in the office or out in the field on the iPad, an RFI or an issue can actually be attached to it. Uh, for this hospital project that we've tested this on, we've also been, e been able to integrate 3D laser scanning information into the BIM Anywhere system. Uh, what that does is it will take in uh, files from a 3D laser scanner 
Um, in this case, we used a Feral Focus 3D. And we actually, um, they actually went and populated the 3D model based on the locations in which the scans took place. Here you actually see a point cloud. It looks like a picture, but it's actually just a very dense 3D point cloud with millions and millions of points that you can take dimensions off of. And what this also allows you to do is to be able to see the non-modeled components, um, such as backing and small one-inch conduit or, con or routing conditions, which the 3D model might not capture. So the Bimaniware system is really supposed to contain absolutely everything that you need um, located in the 3D space, whether it be as-built conditions, coordinated 3D models, or just project documents. Now you saw everything that applies to construction management. Uh, we're currently in conversation with our owner um, to implement to create a location-based system for facilities as well, which has been very exciting. And in this example, we're looking at a typical operating room, and in this picture, you see an operating room table. Uh, what a facilities engineer or um, hospital staff can do is if they would like to access the maintenance information or any other type of information associated with, uh, say, the operating room table, uh, one would simply need to be able to tap on that object and will access uh, the PDF associated with it, the maintenance manual associated with it. In addition, um, uh, Zenfly actually uh, allowed us to try out uh, this a feature which we've uh, implemented on in many of our rooms, where you can actually tap on a floor. And if you tap on the floor, it'll access uh, documents that are associated with that area. What, this, what, that, what tapping on the floor will do is it'll access a control panel that's customized to that room. You can access floor plans. Um, electrical, uh, plumbing, mechanical equipment, or also the 3D point cloud with this, as well as any type of device that's located within the room. The operation and maintenance instructions is a, been a been of uh, most and highest demand by the facilities engineers, which can be attached also in a, in a 3D sense. Like I said, you can uh, attach a floor plan that's located with that area, electrical data information, as well as 3D point cloud information. And it, uh, because this system is, so, is very flexible and based on open source formats, um, the system can integrate with a hospital or a building owner's uh, chosen computer-aided facilities management system in order to generate work orders. Do we have any questions at this time? Yeah, there are two, two questions that have come in. Um, one was what changes are made to the model. When changes are made to the model, do you have to regenerate the views and the QR codes? And the other is what's the typical file size for the models? Uh, when you regenerate the uh, or publish a new model, you do not have to generate uh, regenerate QR codes. The QR codes are encoded with the uh, camera location um, in that space, so they're valid as long as uh, um, they'll, they'll be valid throughout the uh, uh, life cycle of the project. And uh, the file size of this particular project, it was uh, 80, 80 megabytes uh, NWD file size, which is very large. But we've actually been able to put in um, even larger files. Um, in terms of their technology, it's, it's they can speak to the um, leaders here to answer questions of trying the software. 
And one other question is, uh, can you quickly describe the key steps to connect the information manuals and docs to the model components? So all of that was done through the plugin uh, create, uh, given to us by Zimfly. Um, this is an earlier version of the plugin, but um, the plugin that uh, that we used for the majority of the document linking for the project was uh, done through a plugin that allowed us to uh, locate a 3D object within Navisworks and then add a link to it. Um, with, with, uh, upload a PDF to it, or um, or it can even be a, a website link. And uh, let's see here, and it, it also it also don't need to necessarily depend on just the 3D objects to do the linking. Um, our architect named uh, some objects using a a very readable format, readable standard format that we are actually just able to look at the properties tab for all the objects and link uh, some documents that way as well. Okay. That's around the questions at this time. Okay. So that was construction, operations, and facilities management information. So just an overview of the system in terms of the interoperability. Uh, the newer system uses a software plugin on, um, on our best product called Navisworks which is able to take in a very wide variety of file formats. Um, the Dominior system also has its own cloud storage, which uh, does some magic um, after files get uploaded to their cloud in order to optimize accessibility. Um, they're open to supporting uh, open source formats in the future such as IFC. Um, in terms of the, the, the schedule for that, um, that, I would have you'd have to ask Peter. And and Zenfly also gives us access to XML information. Um, that's just metadata that can be extracted from information that we've attached to the model objects for us to be able to use across other different platforms. So we like these we um, this has been this is really good for us because it, allows, it gives us uh, many options. Um, it gives us information that's sustainable, not necessarily closed within a specific system. So that the data can later on be migrated onto uh, an owner's facilities management system, if so chosen. In terms of cost, uh, we've, ha we've tried many different ways to be able to get information as well as building information models out to the field. What we've done is we've uh, purchased and built a custom job site kiosk. However, this was a very labor intensive and expensive uh, venture for us when compared to an iPad that can access all the same information. This in terms of cost, uh, you can buy essentially five iPads for the same price uh, that it would take for a kiosk. A battery life uh, lasts much longer and uh, just, you know, it's, it's just much more flexible. However, I mean the, the kiosk has its own benefits, um, but we found that the iPads more than um, met its duties at the, at the job site. So again, for the same price of uh, one person using a kiosk at a time, um, you can have uh, multiple field personnel out in the field uh, performing checking and tracking work at the same time uh, with iPads using the Vim Anywhere system. And what's great about the Vim Anywhere system is, it's like I said, it's it's very intuitive. Uh, we've actually at McCarthy tried different software out there. Um, Vim Anywhere was actually one of the first uh, 3D model viewing platforms on iPad to come out. 
to come out when we've done our search last year. Um, now there are other several other solutions, but um, uh, Peter has a lot of you know construction experience. He actually cater workflows directly to those at the last 100 feet, which has been extremely crucial for us because the difference between just having another you know complex 3D model viewing program but on the iPad, if that's too difficult to use, that's the difference between someone using it and then someone not using it to view uh, coordinated information on the field. And if uh, a field personnel does not use the coordinated uh, information while in the field, then either they're, like I said, either they're going to look back at the office and talk to the office engineer or just, you know, hope things go well. Um, but as many of you know, on construction projects, on complicated projects, coordination is extremely difficult and it's easy to install things in the wrong area. So here's kind of what the overview of the workflow looks like. Um, between discovering conflict in the field and then resolving that conflict. Conflict, I, I would define in construction as um, in the field as related to MEP, a mechanical, electrical, or plumbing system. You might have a seismic brace in the way of a duct or a plumbing line, for example. Um, and traditional method would involve uh, field personnel say a superintendent taking pictures, taking general notes of an area, which would take a couple of minutes. They would then gather that those pictures and either print out or email it to an office engineer. Engineer, whenever they get to it, whenever they get to their email or get back to their desk, they then locate uh, that issue in the model, analyze it, and determine whether or not the conflict is real or and be able to determine who is in the right, right or wrong spot. You would then send that screenshot back to the person who generated the issue. And in this and in this case, there might be miscommunication. Perhaps the field personnel didn't take very good notes. Uh, may, maybe there's just you know may, maybe a uh, I don't know, there's just some kind of miscommunication, which is which just happens. But once the right communication is communicated, then the person um, in the wrong spot, say, um, in the field, will be instructed to move. Uh, in this process, it could take anywhere between half an hour to five hours, because in this process there are many bottlenecks between and handoffs between. Uh, field staff and office staff, and having many bottlenecks can um, greatly increase the time it takes to resolve a conflict. And on a construction project, on, on very high profile, fast paced projects, um, resolving conflicts quickly and seamlessly is extremely important, and it's very important to maintaining tight schedules and minimizing uh, project impacts to budget. With the BIM Anywhere system, this is very streamlined because bottlenecks are removed uh, because you simply need the field personnel with minimal training to be able to access the 3D model content and information. In this case, you can scan the QR code or use the architectural floor plan um, navigation and that only that that really takes a minute. It loads extremely fast. Right now, it's the fastest loading um, app that we have that, that we've found out there. After that, uh, the field personnel will look at the 3D model and then instruct the subcontract to move. That's as simple as that. They're able to because they're able they're empowered with this 3D model and this, this easy way to access information. They can solve problems on their own. Overall, in terms of pure man hours required to resolve this conflict, we found that there's about a 70% reduction when we've um, 
investigated many cases. This is just in man hours used uh, to resolve this. It does not include all the bottlenecks and, and the handoffs and miscommunicate, potential miscommunication delays associated with this. I have a, a question that came in that I think is relevant here, uh, Philip, and that is um, how many people or personnel are required to maintain and operate the back office BIM for this type of a project? Uh, for this, it just took uh, one person. Okay. Um, just publishing the models as they, um, as a coordination uh, becomes completed. It's just a, a simple export button within the plugin. So it's, it was actually, it actually took a very low effort. Okay. Thank you. It requires uh, some setup, um, depending. Like uh, I, I wanted to attach uh, some mills and and information like that, um, but. In terms of actually setting up the models, it's easy. The QR codes uh, for about for every twenty thousand square feet. Uh, let's we had about thirty rooms, and that it took about a minute per room um, to post the QR code. It's, it's basically just walking around, um, and that, that that can just be done by an intern. Um, I did it. it. Took me about uh, an hour to do it per floor. But those QR codes, we posted it inside of door frames, uh, which which would remain there for um, the duration of the project. Great, thank you. All right. So now we're going to be I'm going to be handing this off to Peter, a co-founder at Zimfly. Yeah, hi. This is uh, Peter. I'm co-founder of Zimfly, as uh, Philip has said. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the um, uh, future enhancements, future features that we're, we're looking at, which is very exciting because there's a lot of new technologies out there, and we're uh, very excited to kind of do R&D and get our hands on it. Um, one of which that has come up over and over again is for a location-based positioning and tracking system. Um, currently, a lot of the technologies out there to enable that, it's still not quite mature, but I think we're almost there. So we're actually doing um, our part in doing the R&D um, and coming up with a solution. We don't believe that a single hardware-based solution will be adequate, which uh, we're also looking at. Uh, we're looking at RFID solutions, a Wi-Fi-based solution, in addition to software-based uh, solution uh, using uh, the tablet's uh, camera uh, for, for tracking as well. Um, so that's the, these uh, developments are very exciting. Um, I think you know within within the uh, you know this year possibly next year uh, we'll be able to in um, integrate uh, uh, um, some sort of a location-based system where you could go into a building and have the sensors around you on the motion tablet and the ones that you can install in the facilities, um, locate where you are in the model, and that has uh, a lot of ramification. You can do it for construction uh, operations as well as um, you know after the handover to the owners um, for you know facilities management. Um, another aspect that we're looking at is uh, augmented reality. Uh, we're also in doing R and D on ways um, to align the three D model. Um, with reality seamlessly in the background on the uh, you know motion uh, tablet based on um, um, based on location and uh, and visual cues and when that's done in the background we can really truly deliver an augmented uh, reality experience uh, one in which where the users can hold up their tablet um, you know view real world objects through the iPad and have billboards um, overlay with um, um, pertinent information about you know that object it could be an RFI it could be uh, a task um, or it could be some sort of punch list um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen you know Google glasses are coming up that's may not be some uh, a specific model that we're looking at but uh, that technology is, is starting to mature and we'll have our hands on that in about a month and that's something that um, you know we'll be actively looking into um, um, to 
deploy this augmented uh, reality uh, technology that we're working on. So the future is very, very exciting. So it, you can see on the top uh, with the iPad where the 3D model is aligned to the actual room and in a true augmented reality experience we can make 3D model invisible and just overlay with um, information, um, you know, RFI information, floor plan information, whatever information to the actual object in the real world. So that, that's very, very exciting. Another uh, way you can already do it, and uh, as um, Philip has talked about earlier, is the linking of facility management information. So traditionally, uh, OM manuals are delivered in, in you know, uh, binders, and a lot of them. And for the more advanced, they're developed in the ePlan room format, you know, in PDFs uh, with linked uh, indexes. Um, a, a new way to do it, a, a better way in my opinion, is to be able to deliver the you know, coordinated model to the owners with all the O&M uh, data linked to the actual objects. And that way you can you know, replace, um, I guess, the whole e-plan room or all the binders um, uh, that you deliver to, uh, to the owners and the deliverable would be a single iPad handed over to the owner and that has all the model information uh, at, um, and as well as the, uh, all the manuals. Yeah, the system is, this is Philip again uh, from McCarthy. The system has been very exciting for us. Um, I mean, having the information linked to 3D model objects and being able to easily access information to it is like giving you x-ray vision. Uh, once ceiling tile is closed up, for example, um, you can just take an iPad, scan a QR code, or just tap on the plan, and you can see stuff above the ceiling easily on an iPad, um, be able to locate shut-off valves, um, as well as being able to look at a, say, a fire smoke damper and just tap on that object and, um, and see the information attached to it. Very exciting. Uh, just to conclude, uh, one of the biggest reasons that the system has been successful for us is because it really caters to the people side of BIM. Uh, as it's been said many times, uh, BIM is only 10% technology, but 90% of it is really sociology. It's really um, having buy-in, having collaboration between many people and many trades. It's a great communication tool. And, and one should never forget about the human aspect of BIM. And this is the, these, this product is one of the ones that really addressed that for us. Second is that BIM is much more than just 3D geometric information. Uh, there's intelligence that comes with the, the models that should be taken advantage of. Last but not least, you should let your process and your objectives dictate your tools. If anyone here is familiar with lean construction or just lean project management methodology, uh, then you would know what this is all about. Essentially, you must begin with your end in mind, then establish an ideal process for obtaining that objective. Then you, you must select and customize the tools to be able to support that process rather than picking a tool out there that's, that's perhaps popular and then, then trying to dictate your process from that. Uh, we found that it's that you'd be much more successful by first outlining your process and then choosing your tools. And after that is to be able to bring the right people on board and to train people in the right way to be able to use those tools. And that concludes uh, the presentation. Um, I'm here right now with uh, Peter and also Winson, who is a um, the technical co-founder for Zimfly. Um, if there's any questions at all regarding um, the project, uh, the implementation, or the BIMINIWARE system itself. We do have another question, um, and that, that was, uh, can you view COBE data uh, from the model components? 
Absolutely. Uh, that information, I mean, it really depends upon the subcontractors and the architect that's involved with the project, um, whether that's attached directly to the model element or it's linked using the BIM Anywhere interface. In this example, um, information has been attached to a, a fire smoke damper uh, with uh, Kobe information. Uh, in this example, it's associated with an uh, Omniclass uh, Table 23. So yes, uh, that Kobe information uh, does transfer. It's it's very useful, and, and it's utilized by the BIM Anywhere system in many ways. And the other question I had was actually my, <laughs> a question from me. Um, do either of you see an application of what you're showing here by the regulatory community at some point in time, the building department field inspectors? Uh, I'm sure we, we like to. Um, at this point, at least in our market, we don't see any of the uh, regulatory folks uh, using BIM yet, and I think it's only a matter of time. Um, I believe in you know, other countries, there's a, um, other than the U.S., there's a, there's a strong push for that, and um, you know, hopefully we, we, we have the opportunity to introduce this uh, to them very shortly. And on, most, uh, on most inspections, on most projects, I mean, accessing information is really the, the key. It's really what takes the most time. Um, there's a lot of waste in just finding the right information. Uh, with, the, with evolving technology today, uh, with wearable computing, with you know, location-based information, um, say someone wants to um, do, conduct an inspection, uh, with this system, it's, it's, it's very possible to be able to overlay, you know, status information, uh, you know, color, model elements, or, or areas, um, depending on um, inspection status, or you know whether something needs to be replaced, preventing maintenance needs to happen. And there's there's a lot of possibilities. This is really excited, exciting about this system. That right now they're they seem to be working on um, the infrastructure to be able to support future growth and innovation, such as being able to support um, facilities and inspections. Another question was, uh, what are typical components that you generate QR codes for? Uh, currently, the, the typical components you would generate QR codes for are, are located. To, to for users to be uh, uh, to be able to easily get to you know say a, a room that they they want to uh, view and also on the on any type of uh, maintainable uh, objects you want that way when you scan the equipment it takes you um, to a view of that equipment where you can um, you know tap on the equipment and get uh, all the maintenance information that you need. Okay, that is the. List of the questions that I've seen thus far. Uh, we will be, uh, if you haven't asked a question, uh, you can go ahead and type one in, uh, or you can email any further questions that you have to me at Theatech, and I will pass them on uh, to both uh, Peter and Philip. Uh, and that's Weible, W-I-B-L-E, at Theatech.org. Uh, with no further questions, um, do either the two of you have any, any final comment, and then we'll close her out. No, that, I think we, uh, that, that's it. Now, I did want to flag again, this was one of the uh, Fiatech SETI Award winners for uh, projects for the uh, 2013 at the Fiatech Technology Conference and Showcase, which was held in San Antonio back in March. And I do want to thank our two presenters today, and thank yeah, Paul. Yeah, Bob. Um, yeah. I, I do have one, one final comment. Um, this, uh, um, the BIM Anywhere, actually our BIM Anywhere app has been on the iTunes store for nearly a year, but that's just really our demonstration viewer. Uh, what McCarthy uh, uh, Project used um, was a pro version that we have piloted with them on the data user. Last six months, that version will be released to the iTunes store in, uh, in about two weeks. Uh, so everyone, please look for that if you're interested, and or give us an uh, uh, email at info at bimanywhere.com. Wonderful. Thank, thanks for that additional comment. Uh, just a reminder, we have recorded this session. 
uh, and we will be posting it to World Webinar Archives in the FIATEC website in the next few days. Uh, and I want to thank both of you again, Philip and Peter, for sharing your work with us and uh, the exciting, uh, exciting project that you've done this for. Uh, and again, if you all do have any further questions out there, uh, please uh, forward them to me at the attack. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.